Today we're going to tackle the question of what would modern look like without any of the Modern Horizon type sets. Modern has fundamentally changed since the release of Modern Horizons 1 back in 2019. The format looks completely different now than it did before that one, and Modern Horizons 2 really changed things, and we'll talk more about that later in the video. But today in the video, I'm going to tackle potentially why most players don't like the Modern Horizon sets and what they're really saying. Sort of tackle what would happen if the Modern Horizon sets were all removed from Modern, and sort of take a look at what might pop up, as I know there are some sort of pure modern tournaments that some magic players and streamers run like doomwake who will reference later in the video but for now let's sort of tackle why you should listen to me really quickly so who am i my name is mason clark i'm a full-time magic the gathering player and coach i have an SG top eight in modern i have a dreamhack modern win i play multiple pro tours i have various wins at 5 10 2ks etc playing modern and generally see myself as a modern expert and I contracted on Modern Horizons 3. As a small disclaimer, these opinions are all my own, and everything I'm saying today is my own stuff. I can't wait for y'all to see Image 3, and I can't wait to do a video breaking that down in the future. But now, let's hop into it. So this is what I believe to be the three big problems with Modern post-Modern Horizons entering the format. Now, like I said, we're going to count Lord of the Rings in here as well. Sort of the direct to modern sets are really what we're talking about. But for clickbait, we got to say Modern Horizons. So with that being said, here are the three things that I sort of hear from players and players seem to be sort of conveying to me. Sometimes not using these exact words, but the general vibe je ne sais quoi of it all. Old nostalgia heavy cards have mostly been phased out. When Modern was originally made... It was sort of created as a place for standard cards to have a home to go play with because at the time it was really the standard and vintage as things and the vintage cards as you might imagine mox power etc it wasn't inviting back then either so modern was a home for those things and the modern horizon sets have unfortunately sort of changed that outcome and they are no longer that way a the bar has been raised and we'll get more on that later but for the most part players are pretty disappointed that they can't really play their old standard decks in modern and while i don't think that was really true in modern before the modern horizon sets it's really overt and in your face post modern horizons one and two the answers rate the bar of playable cards too high players are typically very frustrated by what it takes to be a card in modern these days and it really has created some secular problems that we're gonna get to in the next slide here then also the average cost of threats has gone down dramatically and we'll get into that in a second as well but i really want to talk about this old nostalgia heavy card thing for a second because modern being the home of your old favorite decks or some cards you love mix and matching and sort of being a high power but you know fun stable environment was a big part of modern's appeal even if the highest levels of competitive play that wasn't true while you might play modern in a more competitive and spiky oriented way lots of players use modern as sort of the home to experiment brew and try some wacky stuff and while we still see that stuff happen and i think modern generally is an underexplored format it's case in point aspiring spike streams there's a lot of pressure to really make sure that your deck has a certain bar or accept that you're going to lose a lot more and like i said before i think it's just more overt that your deck doesn't actually succeed where before with the power level being lower and sort of flatter right across cards it made it so that players could sneak by and do things that maybe weren't actually the best or most successful way to compete in the format but they could succeed and modern was touted as a home of where the brewer and the master could really excel in a way that they can't in other formats and while I think there is something to be said that the format is that way and still kind of does that to this day, it is definitely in a different place in part because now sort of the bar for even brewing and playing a deck and making, you know, past, let's say, round three of a seven round event and having a winning record is very high. That all being said, why is that? Well, we just mentioned part of this is the power of answers. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. And that is what I believe sort of happened to Modern in a big way. So if you started playing Magic after the release of Modern Horizons 2, it might be hard to believe, but Modern was actually very similar to current Pioneer. Pioneer is sort of a format that has lots of different decks. Proactive decks are typically the best. You see some amount of interactive Jun-style decks 
succeed in the format, and players didn't have the cyborg answers to cover enough problematic things, and that was sort of a big hallmark of the format. Your cyborg card had a lot of pressure on them, they couldn't cover everything, but they were powerful. Modern Horizons 1 looked to fix this in a lot of ways, with things like Force and Negation, which was a great way to 2 for one yourself in order to prevent your opponent from comboing off or resolving some hard-to-answer permanent. This allowed for certain decks to really get an edge in a way they couldn't before, while not overwhelming the opponent, you know? If your deck was couldn't beat a Force Negation, it was a problem, but the format wasn't so warped around Force Negation that it was a problem that kept you off your deck, and it was really this metagame sort of thing where, hey, if I play a Force Negation deck, I might be losing on some of these other areas, but I'm gaining a lot here. The only real example of breaking this from Modern Horizons 1 was Force of Vigor, which I have on screen here. Force of Vigor is the first example of sort of, oh, this is starting to actually be really impressive and have a high impact. Trading two cards for two cards with no mana on your end really sort of showed uh, players just how dangerous these sort of free spells can be. Then we reach Modern Horizons 2, where I personally believe that they tried to make it where Modern was a bit more interactive. And what happened is, if you have a set that aims high, and you have to aim high to try and hit, then you're going to hit some, and your cards are going to be strong. But if you hit a lot, right, and you have a lot of designs that land, suddenly the entire format is completely different. If a lot of your risk and shots hit, now you suddenly have a lot of really strong cards. And if you miss and you aimed high, guess what? You're going to hit higher, right? Imagine this. As an example, you're trying to throw a dart and hit the middle of the wall, right? If you miss, you're probably going to miss a little bit below the middle and a little bit above the middle, right? You might not nail exactly in the middle of the wall. Let's assume the higher we go, right, the more dangerous it is. Well, if we have to aim high to hit the spot, right, we're going to either hit really high or hit a little bit below. This is what it is like to try and aim high and make powerful answers. Solitude, Fury, Prismatic Ending, and Unholy Heat are sort of examples of this happening, where I believe they tried to make modern a bit more interactive and give fair decks a chance to survive and thrive in an environment where traditionally they just didn't. Fair decks weren't a thing. You know, a lot of players like to highlight Oko Urza as an era where like there were fair decks, but that's a Mox Opal Urza Oko thing not a modern thing, right? Uro is another thing, you know? And before we sort of, before the release of MH2, we actually saw that modern was in a very weird place where Prowess was actually one of the best decks and Heliod Combo was one of the best decks. Ironically, Prowess sort of showing us how strong pingers will be with Lava Dart and powerful proactive game plans. And the Heliod Combo is sort of this grindy mid-range deck that has a combo finish, you know, reminiscent to Pod. So, those are sort of what's going on there, and these cards have really raised the bar for what it means to be a creature deck in modern. Now, creature decks still exist. People tell me that they don't, and they just do. They are just different than I think what people are remembering from the old days, and that is a shame. I think it is very sad that decks like humans aren't really playable in modern at the highest level anymore. That was a cool deck, kind of fundamentally changed what it meant to be like, oh, you sort of you sort of had to be a mold drifter type card, which is a shorthand of saying a card that replaces itself or creates immediate value. These are just creatures with effects. Sometimes they gave a little bit of permission or small hurdles for your opponent to jump through. Stats and attacking, right? The instant value was from things like Thalys Lieutenant or Mantis Rider providing big bursts of damage. That was cool. However, Modern Horizons 1 with Plague Engineer and then all of the cards on screen here minus Force of Vigor really hammered home that that strategy was going to be very challenging because cards like Fury really punish those early turns and are still very strong mid-game plays. Now, I'm not going to talk about how I would change Fury or how I would change Solitude, etc. This is just the world we live in. But However, we do live in a world where decks like Dogmoth succeed and are doing it in spite of these cards. Not to mention the newly added Leyline Binding about one year ago at the time of this recording, too modern, the bar is just very high for creatures. And this has some compounding problems. We mentioned Mold Drifters a second ago. If your card is going to succeed in modern, it really needs to have some sort of immediate value or be very cheap 
so that you can trade with these low mana value cards and make good exchanges, which sort of goes to the next point, the decrease in mana commitment. Threats have really gone down. As you'll see here, I sort of have a zero mana threat in the form of Grief, a one mana threat in the form of Ragavan, and a two mana threat in the form of Murktide Region. Generally, as format scale, you'll see that the ma average mana value in decks goes down because you need to be more interactive getting on board and the spells are higher and the answers are higher bar. And generally, as formats age, the mana value and how much mana you can commit to a threat sort of goes down it goes down in conjunction in part because of the answer spells, right? If you play a format like Legacy, Sword to Plowshares is a one mana answer to all your creatures. It's really hard to commit to one big hulky threat because that isn't going to actually survive against things like Swords to the Plowshares and to a lesser extent Lightning Bolt. Modern sort of has the same thing, right? We just saw Fury and Solitude be able to answer most things for zero mana. Unholy Heat answers everything basically in the format for one mana and prismatic ending always trades even on mana but does it for everything leyland binding is also a one mana answer to any problematic permanent in the format this has really changed modern because now players are playing quicker and quicker games if you've played against hammer time you know that they can typically play their entire hand starting on turn two maybe not all the cards but all the cards are available options this really changes the format, speeds it up, and makes it so it's harder for decks to exist that used to exist, which we'll get to later in the video. This is the breakdown of the most played decks in Modern as of October 7th of 2023. You're going to see Rakdos midrange slash scam in the top left. We have four color Omnath in the beans. We have uh, Rhinos. We have Yawgmoth. We have Hammer, Amulet, Murktide, Burn, Living in, Hardened Scales, Tron, Domain Zoo, Mono Black Coffers, Creativity, and Demir Control. These are the most played decks according to MTG Goldfish. And here are the decks that would straight up die without Modern Horizons. Now, I'm going to get into some of these decks in a second that you might be thinking, oh, those decks play Modern Horizon cards. We'll get there in a minute. But Rector's Evoke, Four Color Scam, Crashing Footfall, Yawgmoth, and Murktide and Domain Zoo. Uh, these six decks, five of them if you're going to be a little lenient on Domain Zoo, but these six decks don't really exist without the Modern Horizons and Universes Beyond sets. Decks like Hammer and Amulet and Hard Scales get worse without Modern Horizons because we're thinking about them in comparison to a Modern Horizons format. But they are basically still around and able to exist without them. Before moving on, it's important to remember that if we're removing the Horizon sets, we're also removing the old cards that go into Modern. So cards like Counterspell would no longer be part of the format because we never had this released in a standard set. Now, maybe that would change, but in the world where we don't have Modern Horizons, but in this world that we're talking about, we're going to assume that things are one-to-one. -one. Otherwise, we're getting to some timey-wimey stuff. Crashing Footfalls is an example of a deck that just doesn't exist without the other cards. In fact, I believe at the current time of this recording, Crashing Footfalls plays one card that isn't a land in its main deck that is not from a Modern Horizons set, or reintroduced into the format via Modern Horizons, and that's Questing Beast, and it plays it because it beats the One Ring. Murktide Region is another deck that really leans on the Modern Horizons sets. If you think about it, Counterspell, DRC, Unholy Heat, Ragavan, uh, Murktide Regent are five cards that the deck all plays four ofs, you know, maybe a two or three of the case of Murktide, that just are from those sets. That deck is basically image to the deck. Rakdos Midrange, another deck that really leans on Scam, Fury, Ragavan, Dothi, Orcish Bowmasters. Basically, all of its threats exist because of the Modern Horizon sets. Domain Zoo is very similar. Some builds play Wild Nacadal, etc. But for the most part, that deck does have a lot of things. And then Omnath is a deck that doesn't lean completely on the cards because things like Omnath are quite strong, Teferi are quite strong, but it does excel and it's hard to imagine it in the exact current form if it wasn't for the Modern Horizon sets. Let's quickly talk about Domain Zoo, and then we'll talk about Four Color in a second, because these are two of the decks that do technically still kind of exist, maybe in a world without Modern Horizon cards. I'm looking predominantly at the main deck, because sideboards would change in a world without Modern Horizons. Obviously, they couldn't even pick those cards, but I think it's a little unfair to have those cards count against these players, as sideboards are situationally dependent on metagames. With that being said, Domain Zoo plays 16 original cards from the Modern Horizon sets in Ragavan, Orcish Bowmaster, Territorial Kavu, and Sinodraco. So 
while that's only 16 of the 60, that is still a lot of the deck, right? There are still 23 other spells in the deck that are not from the Modern Horizon sets. However, I do believe that this deck would look very, very different and probably wouldn't be playing cards uh, in the same exact way or at least not be as high a player in the metagame because the sort of payoff wasn't really strong in 2019. And I think Leyline Binding is not enough along with Neshoba Brawler to really move the needle. Now, Four Color Bean is another example. This deck has 17 Modern Horizon original cards with three added back from Modern in the past. So that's gonna be the Fire Ice in the case of this example. But Endurance, Fury, Solitude, Renin Six, Ephemerate, uh, and the One Ring are all cards that are added to Modern because of the Modern Horizon sets. And this deck maybe exists in a world without Modern Horizons. I find it hard to believe, but I did wanna highlight that it is only 17 of the cards and then three with Fire Eye, so 20, right? Uh, but this deck is being heavily subsidized by the Elementals. I personally believe that this deck would need to look incredibly different and probably much more like the Bring the Light decks that we're seeing um, in things like Pioneer if it was going to succeed. So while it might still be a deck, I believe that that would be a letter of the law still a deck situation and not truly a deck. You know, if we have Rhinos or Murktide, those decks just don't exist at all if you remove the Modern Horizon sets. If we banned all the Modern Horizon cards and all the Lord of the Rings cards, people who own Rhinos would own their mana base and their sideboard cards and their one of Questing Beast. Everything else would be relegated to Legacy. There were some decks on screen that use a lot of Modern Horizon cards when you think about it at a glance, but they could still probably exist and exist in the same form if we were to just immediately ban all the cards tomorrow. So we have 12 cards here in Hammer that are from the Modern Horizon sets. That's gonna be Esper Sentinel, Giver of Runes, Cauldra Complete, Forge Anew, and Urza Saga. Take a look at it like this. You actually have most of the same shell, right? Your sideboard, once again, is going to look a little different. I removed the Sanctifier and Vex that were over there for the sake of looking at this. But the deck kind of still exists, right? And you, you can see a world where this deck could exist if you remove those 12 cards. You would still be able to play Modern, and you would be able to engage in the format, and your deck might be worse, and you might be leaning more on cards like Steel Shaper Gift and being a more all-in deck, but the entire format's context would change, and maybe that would be okay in a world without Unholy Heat, Force of Vigor, Solitude, Fury. So just something to think about that, you know, the Hammer deck list uh, is actually pretty close and maybe could exist and just look a little different and maybe be a bit more fragile than the Hammer that we know and love today. Hardened Scale is another one of those decks that seems like it uses a lot of Modern Horizon cards. And once again, it's Urza Saga being the culprit here. You know, we have four Urza Saga and four Zabaz, the Glimmer Wasp. While Zabaz is a great addition to this deck, you could play Hardened Scales without the Modern Horizon set. Once again, you're going to lose Saga, which is a strong, powerful, fun card, but you, everyone else is losing all their incredibly hard answers, so that's okay. And Zabaz, while really strong, you know, and leads to some really fun, wild turns, could be replaced with things like Arcbound Worker and the format looks so different, maybe the entire deck molds a little, right? The implications of making all those cards leave really changes things. But this is a deck that I believe could exist without Modern Horizons and look pretty similar. To give you an example, here's sort of what the deck looks like once you remove the cards from Modern Horizons in the current deck list. This is, you know, really similar. And you could pretty easily update this to be a deck that is legal in a world that Modern Horizons and, you know, in the context, this might be one of the better decks in Modern. Amulet is another one of the decks that can exist post-Modern Horizons. Now, this deck, you know, uses four Urza Saga and four The One Ring, and I think it is the best example of, hey, I would still exist post-Modern Horizons leaving the format or disappearing overnight because most of my cards don't come from it, and while Urza Saga makes me a lot faster, and the one ring, you know, makes me a lot more resilient, but the entire format is different and the bar is lowered on answers, you probably don't need these type of cards in your deck, even though you would want them if you could have them. So what might be good in a world without Modern Horizons? Before we go on from there, it's important to note some outliers that we won't be covering in detail 
For example, I mentioned earlier, Omnath is probably a card that would exist in some way, but I'm not going to be talking about it too much going forward. Fable the Mirror Breaker has been dominating uh, every single format in Magic. In fact, Modern is one of the few places it doesn't see play. The Legacy it sees play because, you know, you can go something like Crow Mox and Ancient Tomb and the Fable. That is very strong. Um, but Modern Fable has just been a good piece of the format and not a pivotal piece. And with the entire power level of the format going down, I imagine Fable would go up dramatically in the format. Indomitable Creativity is something that we actually saw some players starting to experiment with more before Modern Horizons 2 was released. There are things like Velomachus Lorehold, which are combo decks that can take multiple turns that we could see with the Indomitable Creativity. Also, there are just generally a lot of big boom booms, and this might be a deck that would exist with Dwarven Mind, Leyline Binding, etc. Obviously, today we use Arcana of Cruelty to win the game, but there might be something else we could do in a world without Modern Horizon cards. And I wasn't going to cover these cards in much detail because they get enough coverage as is. First up is Devoted Druid. This actually won Doomwake's event, which ran sort of what we're talking about today, a modern tournament without the Modern Horizons or Universe Beyond sets. This is strong in a world with worse answers. Devoted Druid is a deck that is always on the fringe and players really want to play, and it's gotten a lot of strong upgrades over the last couple of years, but always sort of struggles against the removal going on in the format and has a hard matchup versus some of the more Horizon-focused decks. Things like Rhinos, Murktide are really big issues for Devoted Druid. So this is one of the decks that I think would really shoot up in popularity and become a lot stronger post-Modern Horizon sort of disappearing. Hardened Scales we mentioned before, but its curve problems decrease as the format sort of slows down on the answers being so demanding, having more twos than the end of the world. With, once again, once the worst answers are there, sort of this deck is pretty resilient through the answers we have already. So if you lost Prismatic Ending Fury Solitude, Hardened Scales might be one of the best decks in Modern. It's important to remember Hardened Scales was a deck in Modern before Modern Horizons even existed. And like I mentioned before, some of its hardest matchups are leaving because Horizon Focus decks really beat this up. So things like Four Color, Control, and Rhino are going to be not part of the format, so Hardened Scales might succeed. Now, new decks could pop up that could become problematic for Hardened Scales, but in a theoretical tournament tomorrow, Hardened Scales would be high on my list to pick up and play. Old Tron. Tron remains, I think, one of the best decks uh, in Modern. Before Modern Horizons, Tron was a deck that was definitely dipping down. Um, but players would still play it and it would succeed. The increase in threats uh, benefit this deck. So as you know, we don't have all the Modern Horizon sets that have hyper-efficient threats. The average threats costs go up, right? You imagine old Jun decks, and we look at those, something like Tarmogoyf is a really premium threat to play early, uh, and that is two mana. The difference between that and a turn one Grief or a turn one Ragavan is nine dead. Also, the decrease in efficient answers really benefit this deck. You know, Force Negation, Solitude really made some things like Worm Coil Engine or Karn uh, not as good. And this deck got things like Karn Great Creator since we last saw Modern without the Modern Horizon sets. Uh, I believe we had about eight to nine months of Karn the Great Creator without Modern Horizons. So, you know, that really sort of changes everything. Prowess is a deck that we talked about earlier doing really well in Modern before the release of MH2, and I don't think that would change here. Uh, it loses things like Lava Dart. Once again, though, the increase to threat cost benefits this deck dramatically, and the decrease in efficient answers benefits this deck dramatically. So a lot going on in that regards for this deck. Also, it's an Underworld Breach deck, and so while you don't have DRC Bobble sort of you know filling the breach forever, I do believe that it would be a strong solid part of the format that would be a strong contender and i imagine probably lines up pretty well something like hard scales which i also think is a good contender heliod combo really just hearkening back to the format before modern horizons 2 uh, this is a proactive game plan with a combo finish we've seen in magic that mid-rangey combo decks are always very strong if they are able to be built correctly and able to have powerful cards that work on their own heliod's really the worst card in the deck, right? Maybe Spike Feeder, depending on how you want to look at it. That's pretty good. And the decreased to efficient answers benefits this deck as well. Things I mentioned before about other decks with the decrease in efficient answers and bad matchups no longer existing would affect the humans deck as well. But there's one more thing, and I think there'd be more combo decks in the format, and I'll explain why. The death of Murktide is the rise of combo. See, Murktide Regent is sort of a deck 
that is incredibly popular and incredibly good against combo decks. It plays counter spell, spell pierce, cheap efficient threats that clock you quickly, has a wide array of sideboard options it can play that can answer combo decks, and the bar is just so high on a combo deck to actually exist in modern. That's just the Murktide deck. Other decks also got a lot of really strong tools from these sets that fight through them. So things like Storm and Through the Breach might actually be playable, which humans traditionally has a really good matchup for you. So what's another thing that happens when Modern Horizons uh, disappears from the format? Well, there's more room for cute cards. And I think this is what players really want, right? They want to play Guys the Saint Trap. They want to play Electrolyze. And some of you Dredge players want to play Prize Amalgam type cards, right? But these cards might have a more fringe application. It's important to remember that Modern Horizons isn't the only thing that's changed about Magic and about Modern over the last five years. Fire Design. So Fire Design is a contentious thing in the community because I think a lot of people don't really understand it. But Fire Design is fun, inviting, repeatable, exciting. And what does this really mean? It just means your cards work. There's more to it than that, but I think for the average person, if you hear someone talk about Fire Design, they say, oh, we, there used to be a bunch of Fire Design cards and Eldraine and Oko and Once Upon a Time. And basically, the too long didn't read is, Fire Design is, hey, your cards work. It used to be in Magic that a lot of cards just didn't work and weren't interesting. They had cards that had terrible mana value, awful stats. You just weren't able to get your deck full of playables. And Magic, I believe, was a generally worse game for the average person in the non-eternal formats due to not designing with fire in mind. So fire might have had a rough start, but ultimately I believe it to be a net good for magic. What this does mean though, is that some of the few cards that we mentioned before, like Geist St. Traft, Electrolyze, etc., that were always kind of playable and sort of a cut above cards would now level out a bit more and you probably wouldn't see as much as them. Imagine the card Geist of St. Traft in your deck compared to Fable the Mirror Breaker, right? Fable's probably a bit higher and it's hard to play your Jeskai deck and not just play Fable, it is two bodies that's pretty good against removal anyways, but it at least would be a somewhat of a choice and maybe players would find a way to do it. Ultimately, I believe that it's just so in your face about what is playable and what's not playable now, and that really sort of changes how players perceive things. You know, when you can maybe trick yourself or it's a lot closer, you can still play cards like Geist of St. Traft and have a puncher's chance. Nowadays, well, that card might dodge all the removal. All the bodies and everything is very different, and committing three mana to it is a huge ask. Let's take a random modern event from 2017 and take a look at the metagame and just sort of show you how things would probably not age one-to-one. -one. So I picked a random modern SCG. Fun fact, the SCG website no longer has the top eight deck lists for any of the events, uh, at least in 2017. So I screenshotted all the players' breakdowns so we can go over their archetype. Bonus fun fact here, Michael Majors on screen is actually the lead designer for Modern Horizons 3. It's funny how it worked out where we hit a spot where Michael Majors is actually in our top eight, literally randomly. That being said, let's take a look at these decks and sort of show how things probably might be a little bit different. And it's not all one-to-one, -one, and it wouldn't be like these decks would probably come back for sure in a guaranteed way. Dan Musser, actual, actually also a Wizards of the Coast employee who worked on the other Modern Horizon sets, uh, played Bant Eldrazi. And Dan, known for playing the Eldrazi decks, Bant Eldrazi was sort of just creatures. Uh, if you haven't seen that deck before, it's like Birds of Paradise, Noble Hierarch, and the Eldrazi. So that is a deck that maybe could exist. We see John Sawyer here also played that deck this weekend, but isn't really something that I imagine would stand up as well against things like Fable, the Mirror Breaker, Omnath, etc., but could maybe be fringe players. We see actually that there are uh, a bunch of different Grixis decks in this top eight. We have Grixis Control from Richie, we have Grixis Devil from Garrett, and we have Michael Majors on Death Shadow, uh, and we have Justin Cohen also on Death Shadow. So at this point, Shadow is basically always a Grixis deck. Um, so these are four Grixis decks, which is actually pretty disproportionate, I think. These are definitely popular decks, and I think Shadow is one of the best decks in Modern at the time. But it is, you know, a little wild even by old Modern standards. Um, I think Death Shadow would still see play, and is one of the decks that kind of leans into sort of what Modern Horizons was like. And I think had we not had the Modern Horizon sets, 
decks like Shadow would have gone up and up and up in players' rankings and been a really popular, strong deck. It was very good at fighting over everything going on in the metagames and very tunable. Grixis Control, I think, sort of would be on the downswing a little bit, but it's hard to know exactly how Control decks would play out. So much of that depends on the answers to the threats going on in the format. And Grixis Delver, I think, is just kind of a subset of Death Shadow. You know, honestly, Garrett might have been playing Death Shadow in his deck and just labeled it Grixis Delver. SCG was typically good about that, but those decks are pretty similar, so it's cool to see this happening. Patrick Tilson here is playing Abzan. Abzan was a traditional mid-range deck. Uh, these sort of decks might still exist in a world without Modern Horizons, but once again, I'd be surprised if it's exactly Siege Rhino like Patrick here and other players were playing at the time. I guess to be fair, Patrick, if you're watching this, I don't know if your deck has Siege Rhino or not because SCG broke their website, so we can't really check. But I know a lot of players did play some Siege Rhinos at the time and Lingering Souls type cards, which are, you know, non-existent in current modern. Finally, we have the Lone Combo deck here from Nick playing Ad Nauseam. Ad nauseum really going the way of the dodo, uh, not really part of the format, and I don't believe would have stayed a huge part of the format with decks like Humans on the Rise and Death Shadow on the Rise, two decks that really beat up on Ad nauseum. It's not all bad, though. I want to say that I do actually enjoy the Modern Horizon sets and the Universe Beyond sets. I think they add some really good things to the format, and while there are some cards that make me personally want to pull my hair out, Ultimately, I do think there are a lot of really good things to the format and has made Modern different than what it was before those sets, but still fun and enjoyable in different ways for different players. And I think that is really what it hits on for a lot of players is the death of the thing they loved while there's this rise of this thing that new players love. Yawgmoth is one of those decks I think has been a net great add to Modern. It's super fun, plays with a lot of unique cards that don't see play anywhere else, and is a combo deck that really leverages player skill and asks you to play incredibly well. We also see things like Asmarindica, Marshall, Kadesa, Golokar, which I got a one take. Let's go! I edited a little bit this video, but not that. Boom! Asmo here has been a really cool addition to Modern. There's been a lot of really cool decks that have played Asmo. We've seen her pop up in various places. The food engine has been really cool to see in Modern. And while she is punishing on certain types of creature decks, she does ask a lot of you to build the deck with her in mind. So generally, I'm pretty happy with Asmo. Loneness, Cryptozoologist, is another really cool card. You just don't get cards like this in standard sets, and maybe that'd be different if we lived in a world without the Modern Horizon sets. But this is a card that's really cool, has created a lot of really fun modern decks, and I've had a lot of fun playing this sort of card in Moto Leagues, knowing that you know the best I can probably do is a 4-1, but by golly, every now and again, someone gets the 5-0 with a deck like this. And it's just a blast. And it does a lot of really cool things. So it's not all bad. I like the Modern Horizon sets. But it's interesting to take a look at sort of what Modern might look at. And look at, you know, why players don't like it. In conclusion, I think if tomorrow morning you woke up and Modern Horizons disappeared. And there were no Universe Beyond sets. And you had to play a Modern tournament. You know, it wouldn't be all the same decks. Well, a lot of players would probably run back to them. But a month after that, I don't believe it would be the same decks that we uh, imagine in our minds about what's in the format. You know, it's cool to see events run by streamers like Doomwick that do those tournaments. And I did a similar thing for Legacy about a year and a half ago with Honor Arc Doss and Dom Harvey. But it is different once the incentive becomes to win versus having fun. And while I think a lot of players would have fun and can have fun in sort of fan-made formats like this that don't have Modern Horizons, and it's a cool, interesting puzzle to think about, Ultimately, I think it is not going to be the same and that your cards just would have aged out. This sort of already happened in Modern. Cards started to leave the format and not become big players as new, more powerful cards came out. And we just have a bunch of years of design between now and then. So I really enjoy making videos like this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to hear more conversations and thoughts about Modern from me, I actually have a three-hour video talking about the BNR which I believe happened three days before the Preordain Unbanned, so there's some interesting stuff going on there. And if this is the kind of content you like with Magic that's more review-based or looking at things from a bigger picture, then maybe this is the home for you. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know what you thought. How do you think would be the best deck in Modern? Do you like the Modern Horizon sets? Comment below, let me know, and I'll see you all next time for another YouTube video.